Hey, welcome back to my Minimax 1100R build. And uh, today in the shop, we're going to work on, um, we're gonna com continue along the uh, landing gear um, train. And you can see since the last time I was I actually got the second gear leg completed um, to the same status as the uh, first one that was in that uh, last video. And the brackets are, are uh, are all set here and those are actually those are over here so that's good and what I was just doing um, just figuring out the um, location for the uh, where the landing gear goes on the uh, bottom of the plane it's basically 37 and a half inches from the zero line um, obviously not easy to accomplish when the uh, fuselage is like this <laughs> to actually figure out where that is. So what I'm going to do is use um, a measurement forward from this vertical member and then I'll take a uh, 16th inch drill bit and just put a hole through to the bottom and then I'll be able to connect those two lines, do some triangulation measurements and uh, just make sure that they are square to a uh, point on the tail. I'll probably use the, the, the one hole I have drilled so far for the uh, tail wheel support. Just stick a bolt in that and take a couple lines. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna work on that. One of the first things we gotta do is um, each of these gear legs uh, requires a 37, uh, 37 degree angle right there. So I kind of oriented them in the direction that they that they go. This is the left leg. And so it goes like this on the plane. So I just made a pencil mark uh, on there which direction that gets beveled just so I don't screw anything up. Uh, and then this is the right gear leg. And same deal. It sits like that. So just made a pencil mark right there so I can see the orientation of that bevel as well. And that will keep us, uh, that'll keep us out of trouble. Um, not really trouble, it's just, who wants to go backwards and have to rebuild these again, right? I mean, once is enough. Um, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, to, get the saw set up over here and we will first uh, get those cut. And then we gotta do some hinge work, so, all right. All right, so I was just going to talk you through um, what I do when you have to cut uh, when you have to cut something like this, and you actually have to end up at zero here. Um, the best way to do that is just put a uh, put a board, uh, clamp a board to your fence, and then uh, what I did is I just uh, I just roll the blade back, and then I tap this over, and then I. Uh, turn it on and then I roll the blade out and then I just run a test uh, with a piece of wood. I'll uh, show you here. And now you can see uh, you can see that I've actually got uh, I'm actually going right just right to the edge uh, of a zero line there and for my own comfort I'd actually like to go just a touch more um, so I'm gonna back the blade up and I'm just gonna just give this a little tap not a lot um, just, just about like that and then we'll run this one more time.
now you can see that uh, I actually left just a just a tiny bit of an edge right here which is actually a little more comfort for me so I'm gonna actually go with that and then all we have to do is uh, run our piece through we have a nice solid fence so we don't uh, uh, come out crazy so you don't want to have a fence here and not here so it's not supported so um, now checking our line here that's the angle we want to be cutting on and that matches the blade so we're uh, we're ready to roll All right, so those are those are cut and uh, they look good. Um, everything's uh, right how it should be, and now it's uh, time to um, go for this tube over here, um, hanging out in here, or some hinge material. So let's get that out. So it's a hinge with a uh, 3 16 pin. Um, I actually purchased my hinges. Uh, they actually match, I believe, what uh, Team Supplies. Um, I got mine from McMaster Car. And uh, it's just a steel hinge. And I'll be, uh, I'll be priming and uh, priming and painting them. Um, so I'm not too concerned about uh, a lot of rust. On that, I think um, I think it's the same metal hinges. It'll, it's also the same hinge that's going to go for the rudder and the uh, and the elevator. Uh, same material. So it's uh, 060 uh, this way. And uh, yeah, so let me uh, get the plan here, and we'll uh, take a look at what we're doing. All right, so I've just made a got my mark here at 15 and a half. Um, it actually works out, falls right on a. Uh, right on a line, a hinge line here, which is good. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, uh, I've started pulling my pin out um, because I'll actually have some leftover pin. I'm going to make the pins to length um, because they have a little bit of a bend on them. Um, they have a little bend on them in the front end. So I just need to save about an inch or so, uh, which I'll be able to do from the once I make both hinges, I'll have this much hinge pin left over, base basically. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and slide this pin out, and then I'll uh, I'll cut these, and then we'll uh, we'll mark and uh, and cut the next one. Actually, I could probably go ahead and mark it because I'm just going to end up cutting right on the center line here, right on the line instead of off the line. Um, so. Or what I might do is actually maybe measure from this end 15 and a half and then cut that line as well. Uh, I believe that's what I'm going to do. So I'm, I'm mark that one, then we'll make the four cuts with the pin out. And uh, then, uh, then we'll be able to uh, piece, it, piece it back together and go, uh, and go from there. All right. All right, so I got those uh, got those cut, and uh, now I will uh, 
uh, push the hinge mostly back in. First off, first I'm going to cut the hinge off at the, I'm sorry, I'm going to cut the pin off at the distance that it needs to be, which uh, I think if it just comes out the backside um, and uh, has this, uh, it says cut the hinge pin at 16 inches long and bend the end over. So, um, so I'll do that. I'll, I'll get a couple pieces of that cut at 16. I'll have to go to the uh, to the vise, which is over there, and I'll just bend that uh, bend that end over so that I uh, at a at a half an inch, so that I can uh, uh, pro probably measure to three eighths, and then that way when I bend it, the inside curve will take up the difference. Um, yeah, and then we have just a little bit of shaping to do. Just going to round off the uh, front corners. But I'm going to wait to do that until we drill all these holes. Then it'll be creating a center line um, down here. And uh, these, uh, these are 7 eighths apart. And, and then get the distances right. And then we'll, uh, we'll make it right in the left side. And so, yeah, so I'll get set up for that. I've got to find my Sharpie to accomplish that. But I think I know where that is. So... Um, but I couldn't find it in my toolbox. And I didn't find it here. But I think I know. All right, be right back. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, starting, at the, starting at the front here, I'm gonna mark off um, just the cross lines of where each of these, uh, each of the holes go in the hinge. And uh, from the front working back, let me flip this around. First I've got, uh, the first line is at uh, 3 eighths of an inch, so let's see here. I'm going to do this. That's right there. <clears throat> and then from there, we are three, 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 and two and a half. So actually, we've got one at uh, one and a half. That's where the uh, One and a half is for the eye bolt, so that's here. So we've got uh, three, six, First three eighths. Remember, for the two hinges, um, 
so we, so we end up making a right and a left. This uh, eye bolt hole has got to be on the bottom side, so I have to make sure we get that straight. Uh, now, let's take the square and uh, just draw these lines here. Okay, one and a half on this side. of the plane. It'll be on the bottom. So this is the uh, make sure we got the left one here. All right. Now I marked off already where the uh, uh, where the hole gets uh, where the hole gets drilled for each of these. And uh, so now if you use your square and you pull it down to where works out to uh, it's actually 3 16 from the edge so uh, if you can see that so all I'm doing is I'm just gonna pull this uh, pull this down and then I'm gonna make I'm gonna use this as my reference to make all of my marks so right there There, we'll just double check the measurement real quick. Sixteenths, yep. All right, so those uh, those get drilled um, with a uh, three sixteenths in um, all of those holes. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to go over to the uh, drill press and the grinder uh, grinders over there. So I'm going to just uh, clean up the edge and shape the back end of this a little bit um, like that. You can see there, and just round off the corner these sharp corners on the front end. I'll drill the holes um, and I'll uh, take a piece of wood with me and what I'll actually do is I'll, this was uh, something Flying Cub uh, mentioned before about brackets, um, just putting them up, putting this up against a piece of wood and um, it'll be a little easier to uh, drill these on the flat side rather than trying to drill on this side. Drilling on this side is not a big deal, marking on this side is. So I'll get the center punch, uh, punch all of these and uh, go cut them and uh, um, yeah and then I'll, uh, I'll be right back with you. all uh, 
all drilled out and uh, and shaped. Uh, that's the front. That's the back. And I'll just clean that up a little bit with the uh, the file. And now I'm just gonna just gonna deburr uh, deburr these holes. All right. So our next step now, since I've got uh, get these all shaped and uh, deburred, all the holes are nice and nice and smooth now. So those look those look good. Uh, okay. So now we're ready to. Uh, this is the uh, this is the left gear leg, and this is the left bracket. So. It's going to go like so. Um, just fits right over the, the uh, get a better angle here on that for you. So it just fits over the corner here, and it is. Um, set back the first hole is seven eighths of an inch from from this edge right here so we're just going to go back and mark that uh, so we got uh, seven eighths of an inch seven eighths right there So now we'll put uh, now we put the hinge on, and we get it all lined up. We just move it until we're centered up on that hole right there, and then that would put it right there. And then the next thing to do is uh, while that's being held in place, is to go ahead and mark. All of these holes and then I'll have to go to the drill press and uh, drill 3 16 through and uh, and so what I'll end up doing is I'll I'll just while I'm holding it I'll just put my drill bit in here and twist it so I'll be able to uh, be able to make my mark so And then I'll drill one. Once I get one in place, I'll pin it. Uh, and once I get it, uh, I'll pin it with a, a bolt. And then I'll actually use the uh, drill to start each of the successive uh, holes so, so that I can make sure we got a really good starting point. And time to change the battery. All right, so you can see uh, I've got this hole. I uh, just started that one with the uh, just holding the hinge in place. And uh, now I'll actually go ahead and drill through that. So I've got. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I went ahead and put a put a bolt through there. Um, it's actually a 1032R20. It's more of a more of a screw than a bolt. But anyway, so I've got that through, and now I can go ahead and uh, just hold this in place, and I don't have to worry about that slipping around. And I can mark these uh, other holes.
right, now I know exactly where the uh, drill goes, and uh, and then I'm confident that when I come back, I'll have uh, I'll have perfect alignment. So. Right, so that's going to be uh, that's going to be it for me today. I uh, I repeated what I did on the other gear leg, and I got this one um, also installed. So they're both uh, they're both on there, and this would be the left side of the fuselage, and this is the left gear leg. 
So technically, I'll just take a peek real quick at how this uh, how this goes. So it goes about uh, this is the side. So and it's going to go about an inch and a quarter in front of this mark right here. So uh, this is the left side. So it's going to end up going like so, and it's going to be just about somewhere in this neighborhood right here. So that's uh, going to go about like that. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, goes there, you end up drilling through here, gets bolted to the inside, and then the uh, struts go through, and, and or the uh, axle goes through, and then you just start uh, figuring it out, figuring it out from there. So, and once they get uh, attached here, I'll take the hinge off the front and the back, get rounded. So we'll be routing that. And since I was uh, hustling hinges already, I went ahead and just quickly made the uh, hinge for the for the seat here. So I was just in the process of um, same process, making the hinge. Um, it's just this happens to be an aluminum hinge, and you can see I already drilled the the hole to get this started and positioned here. And then once we get that one, once we get that one locked in. Um, then we'll drill the rest of the holes uh, here. Then we'll have the, uh, have the seat back uh, for some of the steps that are soon to follow where I'll actually be getting in the airplane. So I've got some other things that are uh, that I'm working on. Uh, this will actually be my uh, elevator trim. So I'll be making a a mounting block for that and then this is actually going to be my choke uh, so we'll be making a uh, uh, place for that to mount as well so we'll get that installed it'll be uh, probably a piece of eighth inch plywood um, epoxied to one of the uprights and uh, and then then I have my throttle quadrant, um, and I happen I happen to like the square one better than the other shape, and I'll be making my own uh, tensioner knob right here. So it's pretty simple how that how that works. But then I'll be creating a mounting block, uh, uh, probably out of this three eighths ply. I'll drill some holes where these are. I'll make a. Uh, a mounting block there and then we'll be able to um, figure out how we're gonna how we're gonna get this thing actually mounted um, I've got some ideas so we'll figure that out and so that's cool and this is of course for the uh, for the mixture and for the uh, throttle so there's that. So I have these three things that I have to get uh, in uh, in the plane, and then I have my uh, my fuel shutoff valve, which will be uh, kind of down by my sort of by my right knee um, over on the other side of the plane, and it'll go from the shutoff will be uh, just in front of the uh, gas escalator, so. Um, so my, uh, my, I don't know if you remember my system or not, but the, um, uh, left wing will come across behind the seat and T into the, um, into the, uh, tube coming out of the right wing. And then from there, that goes downhill to the, uh, to the gas escalator. And then just in front of the gas escalator, I'll have the fuel shut off. 
and um, then it'll go from there up the, up through a facet pump into the uh, into the carburetor. So facet pump hopefully is only for uh, takeoff and landing, and as an auxiliary. Um, we'll see when we get to that point and we actually do the uh, fuel flow test without the pump and see what kind of uh, what kind of fuel flow we get. So. Um, and all of that will determine exactly what size battery I'm going to need uh, to fly for as long as I think I might fly. So, uh, yeah. All right. So thanks for hanging out with me today. Um, I do appreciate it. And um, if you're not a subscriber, I invite you to hit the subscribe button and the little bell right next to it. That way you get notified every time I post a new video. And whew, hey, I'll catch you later.